Cancer is a disease that impacts far too many people. In fact, almost 40% of people will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their lifetime. According to the U.S. National Cancer Institute, the most common type of cancer is that of the breast, with around 300,000 new cases occurring in America every year. Most often, breast cancer can be successfully treated, particularly if it's detected early. But sometimes, it's deadly. So how and why do cancers like breast cancer occur in the first place? And what even is cancer for that matter? Well, let's take a look. Cancer is perhaps most simply defined as a disease state that's characterized by uncontrolled cell division. Typically, the cells in various organs of our body have a predictable life cycle and lifespan. Cells originate from cell division during mitosis. A cell will grow to the point where it has enough cellular resources to support two cells, at which point biochemical processes are initiated for mitosis and two offspring cells are formed. The new cells will live next to their neighboring cells, taking in resources, building biochemical molecules that they need for themselves, and exporting other resources for neighboring cells and into the bloodstream. Now, cells don't always undergo mitosis. As DNA picks up mutations during DNA replication, a cell will eventually undergo a process called apoptosis. That's a biochemical process that results in the self-destruction of the cell. Why would a cell ever self-destruct? Well, some DNA mutations might be detrimental to that cell and limit or inhibit the cell's functionality. In that case, it's more advantageous for the population of cells if parts of that mutated cell were broken down and redistributed to neighboring cells. As we reach adulthood, the cells in various organs live in equilibrium, where the rate of mitosis and the rate of apoptosis are approximately equivalent. Cancers occur when there are DNA mutations in a cell that result in either mitosis occurring far too often or apoptosis becoming much less likely to be initiated. Cells with those types of mutations can replicate much faster than the ones around them, creating more cells with those mutations. As these mutated cells rapidly divide, they form a small mass called a hyperplasia. Hyperplasias are hard to detect, and they don't always progress into cancer. They're essentially just an increase in the amount of cells for a given tissue type. Oftentimes, your cellular and immune defense mechanisms can stop a hyperplasia from going to the next level of growth, which is called a dysplasia. If a dysplasia continues to grow, then it can turn into what's called an in situ cancer, also known as a tumor. At this stage, the tumor may need treatment, particularly if it's malignant. A malignant tumor can damage the organ where it forms, and it has the potential to become metastatic or spread to other parts of the body. A benign tumor isn't really considered cancer. It can't spread to other parts of the body, and it generally doesn't harm the organ where it's formed. Let's take a look at the anatomy of the breast. Breasts are made of three types of tissue. First, there's adipose tissue, also known as fat. Second, there are the lobules that are capable of producing milk. And third, there are the ducts that are capable of carrying milk from the lobules to the nipple. All humans, regardless of gender, have mammary glands with the exception of those humans who have had a mastectomy. Some humans have mammary glands with lots of fatty tissue. Other humans have mammary glands without much fatty tissue or without any fatty tissue at all. Hormones like estrogen and prolactin play key roles when it comes to the capacity of mammary glands to produce milk. Most breast cancers involve the milk duct. 
The ducts are made up of epithelial cells. That's the same type of cell that skin is made up of and the lining of most organs. The most common type of breast cancer is called invasive ductal carcinoma. That's where a tumor forms among those duct epithelial cells. So why are those cells so prone to cancer? Well, it turns out that cells that make up those ducts reproduce at a high rate and on a regular basis. Essentially, whenever they receive hormone-based chemical signals as part of a menstrual cycle. Anytime a group of cells has a high reproduction rate, it makes them more prone to cancer. Why would that be? Well, because anytime mitosis occurs, you have DNA replication occurring, and it opens up the possibility of mutations happening that could result in accelerated cell division. In this video series, we'll take a look at breast cancer in more detail. We'll explore the genetics and the cell biology of breast cancer. We'll look at how cancer treatments work, and we'll try to determine how the occurrence of cancer makes any sense at all from an evolutionary perspective. So feel free to check out the rest of the videos in this series and navigate yourself to our website for more information. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.